let's just make sure we know some of the, the names of the key elements. So you're looking at your periodic table. So the name of the first element is hydrogen. What's this element? Okay, and the next one? Lithium. Lithium, yeah. Lithium. Uh, let's just go, let's just to make sure we know those names. So what would the next name be? Sodium. Uh, the, we want to read, so we want to read horizontally. Um, so after lithium, that knows that after three comes number four, which would be beryllium, good. And then, right? Carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorium. Good, let's keep going. That one is sulfur. Sulfur, chlorine, argon. Chlorine, argon. Okay, good. And then a couple other ones that we need to know. Do you know what this one is? Uh, bromine. Bromine and I, uh, iodine. Iodine. Okay, good. We saw this isn't iron. Iron would be that key. Okay, good. I just wanted to review a couple of names there. Well. So uh, let's see, let's say that we've got 40 grams of carbon, and we'd like to figure out how many moles of carbon this is. Or actually, let's say we've got 5 moles of carbon, and the question is how many grams of carbon? Is that so? This would be the question here: Is how many grams of carbon? Let's say we have five moles of carbon. Um, any idea? How could we figure out how many grams of carbon we have in five moles? How would we work that out? I just want to give you a chance to think about that for a second. Now let's think about that together. So um, maybe we should do uh, more than that. So actually, let, let's go back uh, to this. Let's say that I've got eight grams of carbon, and the question is how many kilograms of carbon is this? So if we have 8 grams of carbon, do you know how to figure out how many kilograms that is? We have to convert the unit to kilogram. Right. So how would we do that? Let's just practice that. 1 kilogram is 1,000 of carbon. Right. So it would be 1,000 divided by 8. Get a calculator? Let's try that. Okay, and let's talk about that a little bit more. First of all, um, pardon? What is this? So what is that? Yeah, just one. Okay. Um, so notice that uh, so if you have the same thing on the top and the bottom of a fraction, that's just one. If you have the same thing on the top and the bottom of a fraction, that's just one. Now let's write down an equivalency between grams and kilograms. All right. Now which of these is true? Which of these is the correct equation? Uh, 
Yeah. Who, who's the small unit, grams or kilograms? Grams. Well, it takes many small things to make one big thing. That's the kind of motto that we can use to figure out where to put the number. It helps to start by asking who's the small unit and who's the big unit. It should take many of the small units to make one big unit. It doesn't make sense to, take, to say that it takes many big units to make one small unit. That doesn't make sense. So this would be a mistake. That's not what we want to write. Now, so this is the actual relationship between these. Um, this is what's called an equivalency. Um, so, well, so what we should now work on is unit conversion. Um, so unit conversion is one of the most basic skills uh, in chemistry. Um, and not, it's important in chemistry classes, but unit conversion, I think, is one of the most important skills in real life chemistry, too. Because in real life chemistry, you're going to be dealing with a bunch of different units that you have to convert into each other. Um, so this is an important thing for us to take our time. And we need, make, need to make sure that we have a systematic way to do unit conversions. Um, because um, most things that you have to do in chemistry, you're going to have to do unit conversion as a part of that. So let's stop and make sure we know how to do that. The first step for unit conversion is to write down the equivalency. So we wrote down this equivalency. And you have to make sure that you write it down with the numbers on the correct side. So you might ask who's the small unit and who's the big unit to work that out. The most important thing is to do this on paper. Because like you saw, when you do it in your head, it's easy to get confused. By the way, there's always at least two ways you can write an equivalency. Um, well, let's see. So, because um, another way I can write this is I can write this as Does it make sense that I could go from here to here? I just divided both sides by 1,000. If I divide by both sides by 1,000, I get this. If, if it takes 1,000 grams to make one kilogram, that means a gram is 1,000th of a kilogram. So here we would say that um, a, um, a big unit, a small unit is a fraction of a big unit. A small unit is a fraction of a big unit. So you could use either of these. Now, most people, I think, are probably more comfortable with this because there's no fractions. But you could use whichever of these you wanted. There's other ways you could write this because we could say, because 1,000 is 10 to the third. So we could say 10 to the third grams is one kilogram. And 1,000th is 10 to the negative three. So you could write that like this. So any of these would be OK. Whichever one uh, uh, you, you feel comfortable with would be a correct equivalency. All right, so what is our technique for doing unit conversions? Uh, the techniques are, first of all, write down your starting units. Well, our starting units here were the 8 grams of carbon. So that was our starting units. And also, you should write down your target units. Well, our target units are the kilograms of carbon. And I need to convert this into this. And the way that we do conversions is by using what are called conversion ratios. Ratio is just a fancy word for fraction. So I need to write a conversion fraction. And where do I put the things? That, so in order to make a fraction, I have to put something on top of the fraction and something below the fraction. Now the very first thing we should do is I should write down the units that go down here. Because it's obvious what units I need to put down here. Why is it obvious? Well, I need to get rid of these units. So it's obvious that down here, I need to put grams of carbon. Because then, these units will cancel. So the very first thing that I do is write down these units. Now I should try to figure out what units should I should put up here. Well, the best thing would be to put my target units. Because then I would have the units that I was trying to get. OK, so this would be the units for the conversion ratio. All right, but this is not correct now until we put in numbers. I have to put numbers in, in these two places. Where do you get the numbers for the conversion ratio? They come from the equivalency that we wrote down over here. So for example, what number should I write on the top here? One Yeah. So if I'm going to use this equivalency, I could say one kilogram is equivalent to 1,000 grams. So I would put those numbers in. But you can see why I had to put in the units first. Because until I put in the units, I don't know where to put the one and where to put the thousand. This is where I think you made your mistake, right? Because you put the thousand on top, basically. And that's a mistake that people make all the time um, because they don't do this on paper. So it's much better to do it on paper. So the big problem that people have is, I think it was pretty obvious to you that we had to use the number 1,000. But you weren't sure whether to multiply by 1,000 or divide by 1,000. Well, this is how you figure it out by writing down formally the units. And then you can see we need this number down here. Okay. 
And again, like I say, in real life, when you're in the real lab, you're doing unit conversions so often that you need a reliable technique. You don't want to just be doing them um, informally because then it's easy to make mistakes. All right, and now in this case, we're done because we've canceled the units that we don't want and we're getting the units that we do want. Um, so what does this mean? This means eight times one divided by 1,000. But you can pretty much ignore the one because that's not going to change anything. So it's eight not multiplied by 1,000, but divided by 1,000. Eight divided by 1,000. So what should my answer be? Eight times ten to the negative three kilograms. Good.